Okay. Thank you, Brian. So welcome to the planning board meeting. Um, this is July 2nd, I'm sorry, June 2nd, 2022. Uh, first order of business is to attend to commercial development review ordinance amendments as we address the commercial solar facilities. And when last we met as a large group, I know we had, um, I had a group Anyway, in our last meeting, we talked about some things, but thought we would want to make sure to talk with you too, George, when you return, because um, we had gone through some things, had some suggestions, had some ideas uh, relative to the memo that we had gone through before that you'd written. So I think we wanted to make sure to get some consensus on that and then move forward. So yeah, if we good. could, and um, let's see, I think where we were with that one. But I did uh, have an opportunity to review the YouTube. Okay, okay, thank you for doing so. And so um, maybe we maybe to start, where would you like to start? Uh, no, I think we should clear up the remnants from the last meeting. Okay. Uh, I know one had to do with uh, wooded wetlands. Yeah, the buffer from wooded wetlands. Um, and then we put off um, clear cut until everything yeah. was here. Pete, welcome. Hey. Okay. So, what number was that, Craig? Where were we on from, from that? Oh, one? I don't know. It was like, uh, well, was it uh, 12? 12. Okay, yes. I had right. proposed that there be none, and I gather the discussion is maybe there should be, and Rich offered a compromise. I don't, I don't know if it got much traction of uh, having a 75 foot setback if the wetland's larger than five, five acres or larger. Mm -hmm. That's kind of. Right. Um, and so that compromise, I think, was offered up because we had a discussion about like, how much stuff was, you know, in a parcel, right? And if there are wetlands, what does that leave you? Remember, we're talking about some of that. Craig, what are your thoughts on this? Well, um, this is going to be comparable to can I build right up to the wooded wetland? The uh, uh, I, I'm, you know, I don't feel strongly about this. I, I only did it because uh, I know the state, well, uh, the state program doesn't. And, uh, and it, the primary value of wooded wetlands is really for stormwater control and flood protection. Uh, some will be deer yards, as we found previously at one of the subdivisions we looked at. And so that then that setback would come into play, but I'm fine with a 75 foot setback if you want to be uniform across the board, um, or a buffer, I should say. Consequently, a setback. Yeah. Around any wooden wetland, or are you putting a size to it? Uh, I'm fine with any because I, I think the mapping that the U.S. Um, Department of Interior does doesn't go down to a real small scale anyway. So I, I don't know exactly how how precise they get, but um, I'm guessing that it's going to have to be several acres in size anyway to even show up in their mapping. I would have to think so too. Yeah, it could be several acres. So I, I'm fine with that. But okay, so so I want to make sure I'm following you guys. So so what you're uh, proposing is doing is what is now at the bottom of page 10, just uh, delete the, the references to wooded wetlands so that it would, that sentence would end 75 foot setback naturally vegetated buffer from wetlands included in the U.S. Fish and Wildlife's natural wetland inventory period. Is that correct? Yeah, and eliminate except for yes. wooded wetlands. Yeah. And, and so and so yeah, you want to eliminate the next pair, the next sentence as well. Yeah. So 
So, so just to kind of clear the air on that. So the the idea that Rich offered up that compromise about you know the five acres and stuff. Are we good that we're not going to entertain that at this time? Yeah, yeah I'm fine with that. Fine. I, like I said, I, I'm guessing that uh, their level of scrutiny is such that you know it, it'd have to be several acres or more to even be mapped. Okay, and I would I would agree with that because things too small are. are I don't want to say they're insignificant. They can't, it's hard to view what they are trying to indicate. Yeah, particularly on something like that that's heavily based on the soil types. Right. All right. So if we're good on that one, number 12, we, are we ready to move on to the prime farm, farmland discussion? This had been something that I think we've been thinking about for quite some time. I know months ago we talked about this a little bit. Um, and I'm, thank you for this suggestion. So are we all together on 13 here? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm at the bottom of my printout, which is, and maybe this is not correct for you guys, but it's, it is page five of eight where the suggested worded wording oh, so reads. You're looking at George's. Yeah, uh, it's in my right memo, Craig. Is that the right way to do this, or do you want to go to the other other one? I thought we were good. So Anthony uh, had suggested, I, I don't know if you guys discussed it or not, but moving this as a prohibition further up in the ordinance. Yeah, so it would it would be at the it would be under citing prohibition. So as I was looking at it, yeah, it, it seemed like that was a citing prohibition. So yeah. my suggestion was is to move it to the bot and now the document that you have before you, it was moved to the bottom of page eight. There is one um, substantive thing I, I think would be worth discussing some, and that is uh, I had originally written it up as uh, no more than 10% of the total project area. And that comes from the guidance that the state put together, the Department of Agriculture put together. But I later learned that, um, that that's in conflict with the definition in the state statute of farmland, which mm -hmm. relies on five acres. And uh, the definition in, in statute, which I, I, I didn't bring enough copies for everybody, but I can read to you, it, it builds into not only acreage rather than percentage, but it also, uh, whether it's really actively been farmed rather than fallow soil out there. Uh, farmland means any tract or tracts of land, including woodland and wasteland, of at least five contiguous acres on which farming or agricultural activities have contributed to a gross annual farming income of at least $2,000 per year from the sales value of agricultural products. Um, and then there's some caveats that go on, but uh, th that's the gist of it. Uh, Got this thing in there. A parcel of land on an island may not be considered contiguous to a parcel on the other side of the river. Hmm. Um, it seems kind of obvious to me, but okay. so it, the, qu the only question I have for everybody is do you want to stick with the 10%, which comes from that set of guidelines that uh, Department of Agriculture came up with, or want to change that to five acres? Uh, I recall Steve Boxbaum at one point, and I don't remember when this was quite a while ago, indicating that uh, if you went with a percentage, you would penalize projects like his that are more modest in size, where I don't remember the exact size of his, but it's like 20 or 25 acres. So you're taking potentially two acres out of uh, use. Whereas uh, if you have a, an acreage uh, thing, you're not penalizing the small facilities quite as much. Um, but it, it doesn't really matter to me. It's more a matter of whether you think it's important to be consistent with that state definition of farmland. So, I don't know why it seems like the state's actually in conflict with itself on this. Mm -hmm. So what? What would we have that would be considered farmland? Probably the Delta Road. Yeah, any of the hay fields in town, I would think. Certainly the 
the big the farm. The two farms, yeah. Um, I mean, if it, if it, if you, you relied on it, gener having to generate some income, that's the only things I can think of where people are generating income off of farm income. Right. Belgrade. I mean, in other towns, obviously yeah. there'd be a lot more, but we've already got um, behind here. Um, how would that be substantiated though if, if that's a private endeavor how would how would the town know how much money is or how much income well is yeah it gets complicated that's the problem i think mm -hmm. uh, the uh and i i wasn't going to suggest that we use the definition from statute i was going to suggest that we either keep it the way it is or just replace it with five acres. Because I, I don't think we want to get in the business of asking people, okay, how much money did you earn off this hay field last year? Yeah, I know. We have to check what tax. Yeah, I mean, that's. I would like to avoid that. Yeah. yeah. Um, really, none of our business. It really is not any of our business. Um, well, I only bring it up because it's conflict with the statute. That's all. Yeah. So, so if we left it like how it's worded here, um, Craig, when you're thinking about those those farmland areas in Belgrade, mm -hmm. do you think that this 10% as is worded uh, would be a problem? Or might you prefer altering this to go to five acres? Five acre pie. That's I don't feel very strongly the way you want to whichever whichever us the best. Yeah. So if we didn't adopt the state statute but use five acres, um, might it read, let's see, uh, protect prime farmland and farmland of the statewide important agricultural soils land. And then how would we do about the five acres? Uh, well, no, I don't, I think, Peter, all you would need to say is no more than five acres of the total project may be located on land with soil defined as right. great. Okay. So if we did that, that would mean that let's see, you're, you're basically capping the amount that would be on prime farmland. That's what we're saying. Say no, not more than that. Mm -hmm. I'm good with that. How do you all feel about that? You good? Pete? I'm uh -uh. okay with that. All right, so, so that sentence would read no more than five acres of the total project may be located on land with soils defined by U.S. Department of Agriculture, blah, blah, blah. And yes, eliminating the, the revenue piece. There is no revenue piece as is written. Okay. But you're right though, we're not going to go by the revenue piece by the state statute, mm -hmm. that part that that came from the definition, which seems to be- So that would have to be changed in the citing prohibitions, uh, Anthony. Yes, yeah, okay. And, and you guys feel like, you know, to me that we're prohibiting the siting of these things on five acres of prime farmland. So I, that's the reason I put it there. Is that agreeable to everyone? Do you think that's the right placement of that? Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, we require them to do the soil analysis requires as part of the application material that they have to submit. So, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Craig, Pete, yeah. and, uh, and I can see Sarah says, I'm good with it too. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah's zoomed in, so she's chatting. Um, Excellent. Okay. Okay, great. 
Had we gone over 14, 15, and 16 already before? Uh, we previously went over the fencing. Yes, yeah, yeah. those are, I think those are all in. All in um, yeah. I was going to ask though about 15. Yeah, no, that's been done. I got that checked off. Um, 16 is the one that I wasn't sure if, it, if it, that had been addressed yet. Oh, I okay. think it was at the last meeting. Let me do a quick search. Uh, 16 was uh, all electrical system installations be performed by or under supervision of being licensed with. Yeah, we took care of that. Okay. Where is it, Craig? I'm not seeing it. I don't know. But I can remember. I remember it on that. I'm going to find the You know, I'm not, I, I, I recall uh, talking about it, but I don't see it in this document. So where, where do we think that this, in which section should that, should that be? So I'm thinking not citing. So the, there's an item, uh, well, in my memo, it's number three about being designed by a main registered electrical engineer, maybe after that. So it's designed by an electrical engineer and installed by a main electrician. Does that make sense? That would make sense to me because that seems like it's a standard we're looking for for to have approval. It's a logical segue from one mm -hmm. concept to another in my mind. Document. Just so it didn't help me. I, I see it. Did you find it? Yes, I did. And so, and so that that sentence right now says the solar energy system shall be designed by a main registered electrical engineer. And then I'll just add to that all electrical system installation shall be performed by or under the supervision of main license. Like yep, that'd be good. So, so if you have the newer one, it's uh, page nine, the letter C. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. <clears throat> this could be Sarah coming in. And then, was it, I think next for us, we was just talking about the clearing of land, right? That was one thing we wanted to talk about. Are we all okay to move on to that topic? Yes. Yep. So maximum area of clearing of land that is primarily forested or wooded vegetation. Um, and then I think in George, in your memo, you said include, and then question mark, how much clear cutting is too much? And then how much negates meeting the objectives of the comprehensive plan regarding the character of Belgrade as well as otherwise. Um, so where are we with this one? I don't recall, did you guys discuss this? No, we tabled it. No, we tabled it, right? Yeah. So I, you know, I offered two possible alternatives. One is to, you know, just set a X number of acres is the maximum limit. Um, or some kind of incentive for uh, a developer to minimize the acreage cleared. Like, well, the example I gave for every acre they clear a forest, they have to somehow protect uh, as open space another acre in Belgrade. The problem with the latter is it's more complex to administer mm -hmm. and requires tracking and all this other stuff. So, in that sense, it would be simpler to have a maximum acreage uh, yeah. well <clears throat> for our purposes i like the simpler method um although conceptually the other part does offer a more sophisticated well, it's sexy <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> but <laughs> it's not unlike other things that happen at both federal and state governmental things where you well our trade off wetlands are, yeah exactly that kind of thing, um, but um, but that you have to. 
you have to have the systems in place to be able to track that kind of stuff. And yeah, and uh, we that may be a challenge for us. I, I would I would dare say it would be a challenge for us because we are resource constrained as it is. Um, so isn't there like a fifteen acre maximum? What's the state maximum clear cut? Uh, hundred acres. Thank you. But I can't clear cut to put a subdivision on. Um, that'd be good with the fifteen. We'll go on the middle. Yeah. 15. 15. I'm, I'm okay with 15. I think that's, I, I mean, I, I don't have a lot to judge this by, but um, the uh, I mean, 15 acres is a substantial clear cut in a mm -hmm. town like Belgrade. Um, yeah, and well, I, mean, I know, I mean, I don't want to it. you know, I, I, I suppose the uh, consequence of that is that it, uh, somebody that, I mean, I never thought until the proposal off of 8 and 11, I came along, I never thought anybody would propose, it wouldn't be cost effective to propose a real large clear cut for the purposes of only of a solar farm. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I didn't know much about it, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, if you put, put a place a limit for, uh, unless it's a very large limit, you're pr pr pretty much excluding larger ones that are exclusively in woodland. Uh, just so that you know, we think about that. But I, I can, I personally can live with 15 acres. Let me. I'm, I'm sort of thinking. Um, it's it's a new tech, it's a new industry, it's new technology, especially out here. You know, we could uh, you can always go up, increase. So if you go on, on the low side, you know, you, you're allowing, you know, the business to go on, et cetera, et cetera, and they can make the money at it. And if, if, if later in the future, you know, later on, if there's, if there's demand, the increase acreage, you can do that. And if you can get, it's like, it's hard to go back and reduce it. Yeah. So I just, I just assume where it's a new industry, you know, where you're going to have to feel our way through. I'd like to see about 10 acres, you know. No, Pete, I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward, towards 10 acres too, but maybe for a different reason. Okay. I'm not opposed to what you're saying at all. Um, I agree with what you're saying. I'm, I'm curious too, um, at one of the meetings that the, the uh, place up here had with the DEP application, I know one of the um, town's residents was there and they talked about the value of the forest and what it accomplishes for everybody environmentally. And, um, and, and how that to take away the trees would be counterproductive to then put up a, a solar panel in its place uh, from the example that was given at the time. Right. Yeah. And you might remember that yeah. comment. Well, no, I, I didn't, I wasn't at oh, that meeting, but okay. I, I had thought of that myself. So, um, in terms of car, carbon sequestration. Correct, correct. That's exactly where I'm thinking of. Um, so, I don't know, like Pete suggested, starting off small is not a bad thing, I, I believe. Um, there is value in the wooded acres that we do have. I guess I will suggest and back Pete's idea of 10 acres to start with. I'm on the way, because you get it on the hill. Everything on the lakes are on the hillside. Yeah. Um, you know, I was at that meeting. Yes. And um, I listened to what they had to say to They made a lot of sense. And the amount of water that it absorbs. And they didn't really have any good answers on how to, they said just bring it to a ditch and, and mm -hmm. let it run down. And so, yeah, I'm fine with them. So, from a carbon sequestration perspective, maybe some yeah. other things. I this was before we actually started work on, on the ordinance, but I had that same question in my mind, where's the tipping point or where's the break even point on how much woodland you clear where uh, the, uh, the sequestration uh, is outweighs the amount of uh, benefit 
in terms of replacing carbon dioxide emissions to the atmosphere by using solar. Well, um, and uh, I was having a hard, I, I came up with some information. I mean, obviously it made a lot of the large uh, woodlot owners um, sell carbon credits on the open market. Um, and, and, but they have tens of thousands of acres. And as it turns out, Steve Buckholm actually turned me on to some research that has been done about that. And we're not even in the ball game. I mean, the, you, you're talking thousands of acres to come up with the same amount of benefit to the atmosphere as a relatively small solar power facility. I so I, I'm not sure that's the issue I originally thought okay. it was. Um, but um, because I was thinking, ahead that well maybe at that tipping point is where we you know mm -hmm. before that tipping point is when where we put the limit but mm -hmm. uh, we're nowhere close to that um, so we're well under no matter if it's yeah 10, 15, I, I mean we're talking thousands or tens of thousands of acres um the uh um the other consideration is that we may have facility a facility con uh, that's proposed where most of it's in a field, like a hay field, old hay field, but uh, between clearing of uh, wooded buffers to, for the roadway and 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 uh, the power line, and uh, and then maybe some additional expansion, you know, that's all going to count to whatever cap we come up with. Um, uh, but there's not going to be much of a hay field. Um, I'm so sorry? There's not going to be a lot of hay field. No, there isn't going to be a lot of bill grade in hay field. Because there's just not much hay field. We just decided that. Um, so I think it's more of the water consumption on the hillsides is my biggest concern with the whole thing. Because if that, you're just <coughs> new brooks and new open water. And then, I mean, because those trees, that's what was that 40 gallons for yeah uh, 40 gallons a day for a five inch tree four inch tree mm -hmm. i mean so you take a hillside like where they want to put it over there that's eliminating a lot of water that's going to be running down that hill where they already have water issues in their basements well i'm fine with 10 acres um the uh uh, I mean, they're still going to have to uh, do a stormwater runoff analysis anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, as you said, uh, woodland uh, infiltrates a lot more water than grassland does. Um, and, uh, and certainly more than something like this, where you, some, you're going to have an increase in impervious surface area. So anyway, I, I'm, I'm fine with that acre. One, one last question about this. Um, uh, I think this discussion is good too to help answer your question about uh, you know negating how much negates meeting the objectives of the comprehensive plan regarding the character of Belgrade. So specifically about the character of Belgrade, um, yeah, I think going to the lower end speaks to the character of Belgrade rather than the upper end. That's my personal take on this. So I want to make sure we address your question. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. I, I, I um, having a hundred acre clear cut, even with buffers and stuff around it, um, I'm not sure it's really consistent with the comprehensive plan. Agreed. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it isn't. So it is not consistent. <laughs> okay, so are we in agreement then? Ten. Yeah. 10 acres then thanks everybody i think we're in good shape so we're so saying let me, let me ask you a quick question so do we think that because just looking through here i'm not finding a good place for that to be so maybe it just needs to be its own letter under uh under 10 people. It, it makes sense to me its own letter or number. And, and just borrowing some of the language here, just keeping it really simple and concise. I've written, please weigh in here. 
the maximum area of land that is primarily forest land or the maximum area of wooded vegetation that may be cleared for a solar facility is 10 acres. By the way, the reason I use that term wooded vegetation, I was thinking of the uh, clear cut down the street from me, uh, which now has a lot of sprout growth on it. Uh, and I could see that somebody coming along and proposing that for a solar facility. Good. Okay, so I think we're good there. So that are we in agreement too that that not only is the wording appropriate that was just said, but that would be under its own basically enumerated standard of approval. It would go under that area. Anthony, you did that. Yeah, so I mean, what I've done right now is I just put it between setbacks, minimum setbacks, and visual screen requirements. I can look at that. Good. Okay, are, are we then on to number 18? Oh, it's a shaded. And that was um, in George's memo. Uh, should we require a minimum of 15% of the developed land area to be reserved as open space? As has been required of subdivision since the late 80s. So did we talk about that a little bit last time, Craig? I think we did, right? Because we're talking about consistency across. Um, Ordinances and that kind of thing. And so let me ask the group this. We, we had talked about, and Sarah had put together a, a lot, a nice chart, and we talked about the setback from the um, uh, property line mm -hmm. um, that puts people away from the property line, right? or puts some um, uh, development away from the property line. Are we then also asking, see, 15% to be preserved for open space? Does any of that count towards it? That's a, historically at least. Earlier, it, my first day on the plane board, that's how it worked that the uh, uh, area is protected uh, either at buffer or whatever it might be, uh, count uh, could um, count towards the 15% in subdivisions, that is. Mm -hmm. uh, and that made it more appealing to applicants. But um, in the, the uh, Rocky Shores Estates uh, subdivision, they went a step further and, well, they actually protected more than 15% as open space. Mm -hmm. So, like up here in this proposed one up here, there's multiple properties. So, if they're only listing a leasing or some of it's going to be leased, some of it's going to be bought. But if they're not buying the whole acre, the whole property, then that remnant of that property can't be used as the 15% open land. It's got to be the, in the amount of property that they're leasing or buying. So if they're leasing 10 acres out of a 20 acre property, then that other 10 acres doesn't come towards their 15 Right, that's right. And, and, and uh, uh, so the wording I used uh, based it on the acres that are actually developed or disturbed. Right, it almost doesn't matter if it's leased or owned, right? right. It's total, total leased or um, total disturbed. Or, right. Yeah. Well, it does matter because Um, so if they disturb disturb town in this how are we, if they're only recent town and they disturb town, 
the that property. Well, I guess if they're leasing 15 and they just took 10, then they'd be covered. As long as they're, they're leasing more than more than what they just took, 15 or more. Really I, I, I understand what you're saying, and yes is the answer, right? That, um, let's try and come up with a good example. Um, I don't know if I can come up with one. I lost the list and start over here. Can you recap that again? Well, I was just concerned that, you know, if they're just leasing, that they're not including the other part, even though it's on that same body. So they're leasing this amount. Yeah. That they're not including this amount for the 15%, even though they're not leasing it. But they can only, the way it's worded is, you can only do what they're, the property they're leasing and the clearing is to do it. So, yeah. I was just bringing it up because there's multiple properties. There's right. factors and there's, there's several properties right. involved. Plus, it's a mix of massive and properties and at least. Of each property. It's not a whole property. Yeah, right. Because so, you come up with some kind of wacky thing of, of for them to say, oh, well, we have this three and a half acres here and this one and a half acres here, and then another 10 we're going to buy. Uh, you know, and so you come up with a total of eventually maybe 15 or something acres. Um, what we're trying to say is, whatever it, I think, whatever it is you lease or buy, all of that. Um, you have to have 15% reserved for open space um, and the disturbed area. Uh, let's see, how can we say that? Well, so the 15% would be driven by what the acreage is it's actually developed. Right. right. Regardless of whether they own it or lease it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it, so are we good with that, that the leasing or buying doesn't, it does not matter? It doesn't matter. And I think with what we have with all the buffers and setbacks, and I mean, most of us can be taken care of in that. In my, in my. And, and so are we also in agreement in thinking that whatever is, is a, setback due to buffers or whatever that that can be part of the 15 percent that's reserved for once they designated as such that it, and they have to do that on the plan yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, that um, I had to do mine at the bottom of my subdivision towards the lake, picking wetlands and stuff, which actually created a better situation than doing it from setback on my property lines. It is. You know, so I did it, I had to do it at the bottom. So I have four or six acres coming. I can't remember off the top of my head. Are you know. protecting more valuable land? Yes. So, you know, that's, I was required to put it down there. Oh, that wasn't your decision? It might have been partially with my engineer, my engineer probably. But I have quite a chunk down at the bottom. Yeah. That's non-buildable. Mm -hmm. It's probably well above 15 or so. Um, so. Yeah. So if you if you if you got you know wetlands and shoreland there, uh they set backs anyways. So yeah. they kind of they can't really go in there and develop it anyway. Right. So the 15, yeah. so the question is, is that 15% going to count? That, that, that part of the 15%? Yeah. I think what we're suggesting is you indicate it on the plan. If you don't indicate that setback from the wetland as part of being reserved for open space, then you're going to have to indicate it somewhere else mm -hmm. on the plan. Okay. I, I believe uh, George, am I capturing that correctly? Yeah. I mean, so, maybe we want to. So you want to do that? 
add some some language that says uh, you want to make it more restrictive that the uh, I just don't make it more restrictive that the acreage to be reserved as open space spaces to be shown on the site plan. Yeah. Does open space need to be defined? Ooh, good question. Good question. Yeah. Because one might say, is open space a setback that includes a wooded buffer? What? Yeah. So if we have a 200 acre farm and, and so be 30 acres, 50 or so. That would be reserved for open space. I'm pretty sure open space is defined in statute, but I couldn't recite for you what it is. Because uh, there is a program to provide tax incentives for protecting open space. Is there a definition page in your building? Uh, well, the ordinance has yes. definitions. Yep. Because we're just adding to the commercial, commercial. development for yeah. space. So um, I, I wonder, instead of using the term open space, might we consider just saying that a minimum of 15% of a solar facility's land area is to be reserved as undeveloped? Should we be, be or undeveloped open areas. space? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're I mean, it's pretty common term. Yeah. Yeah. We're still still I, the you know, I, I just wouldn't want someone to. Do some clear cutting and say, "Well, we've opened the space." <laughs> <laughs> That's That's a it I was now an open space. Yeah. What? I think you're right about, at a minimum, adding the term "undeveloped." Undeveloped. Okay. In there. So undeveloped exclusively would, would mean that however the landscape looked is going to be left intact. It's undeveloped to me means that it doesn't Man, have houses in it. Undeveloped and natural open space. Yeah. As as it was, as it's the status quo was when they, they acquired the land. I don't know if I, I know what you're saying, yeah. and, I, and I agree. Yeah. It's like. I'll As it is, it. Yeah. untouched, don't mess with it, yeah. don't develop it, yeah. don't cut it. I think, However, the, I think the word natural gets us there. Oh, okay. I have a question as to exclude the setbacks because. I'm down to pull in. Um, Especially here. You know, leaving the upper properties as undeveloped on the setbacks. Isn't really going to help the lower part going towards the lake. So if this thing is so long that our setbacks alone off of the, if they're way up on top of the hill, what are they doing to the bottom of the hill towards the lake? Yeah, so if we went with what we have now, in and by itself, the answer would be, I think, maybe nothing. But we also have some other tools at our disposal, don't we? With um, stormwater yeah, control. Stormwater control. Right um, there's also the aesthetic, what did we call that the thing before? Impact. The visual impact analysis. Mm -hmm. That too is going to play a part, I think. Um, is, is, there, is there a limitation on the uh, slope of the land? Yes. 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 Was it 20%? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the resource protection. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, I'm not trying to advertise this as a, an especially meaningful way to protect open space because it won't be, but it will be consistent with how we treat subdivisions.
Does it, does that, do you think that we have sufficient tools so far yeah. with what we have listed? Um, so we could just add the terminology on the lake side of the de development. Yeah, that's something you talk about, sure. So like on this example up here on, on the hillside, what we're saying is that, that the 15% on the lakeside, how, how would you say that? On the lakeside of the development. Okay. Clear, huh? What about one sort of like sited like Steve's where there is, no there is a lakeside, but it's not even visible from the lake. Yeah, so that wouldn't, it wouldn't really have an effect on that one because it's really not a lake side. So I mean, there is, but I think it's actually. Yeah, I, I would, I'm getting a little twitchy about all the redundancy. Um, I mean, we already have uh, visual impact assessment, visual buffers, you know, to deal with that kind of an issue. I'm not sure this is the right tool to try to do that. Um, to try to I'm do just, for the, I think for a solar field, it may be appropriate. And you know, this is getting away from being consistent with uh, non-solar fields. Yeah, but if I think solar fields are, we're gonna treat them as a solar field. They're different from typical Type of uh, development. So, well, they're only different in the sense that they're going to be bigger. Mm. All the other issues are the same stormwater runoff, phosphorus runoff, visibility. Yeah, it's, it's the problem with that, though, so what they're calling impervious it's just the pole in the base so they're minimizing it to a point where it's, it's really not actual well the way we're defining it the surface area of the module would count is impervious as well say that again? and rightly so could, could you say that again i didn't get muffled when you said that the uh the, 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 the surface area of the module the uh, yeah. solar panel would count towards the amount of sur impervious surface area. Right, like a so roof this, would. Yeah, right. just like a roof would. And we talked about that before. Yeah. Because that, that was one thing that Craig, I think, brought up in, in terms of equity with other things. Craig, I'll, I'll meet you halfway. How about if we exclude um, the buffers, the, all the other existing buffers from this 50%, so it's above and beyond that? Sure, it works. So just a reminder, we establish uh, setbacks to be 125. So whichever the optimum that they were able to use a property there will be 77% of that property. So we're taking off from the 100%, we're taking off 15. Well, um, I think I about from the 100%, uh, we already by the buffers, we most likely will take 20, 3%. So we, uh, we are in the 15 on top of the 23, or that 15 is spiral of the 23. It's with the buffers and the 15. So then any developer then is, is, is 77 minus 15. They, they will not be able to be develop. They're only going to be able to develop 60% of the property that they purchase. Do says we can always change it in the future if you want, but I think it's a good starting point. So we could add something like areas included and buffers and setbacks shall not count towards uh, this provision. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so this would be a, a little bit more meaningful in terms of what's actually being protected. So this would be a standard of approval, right? So, 
this one would be a I'm saying that for Anthony's sake. Uh, yeah, so so what I've done uh, is put clear cutting and open space in one paragraph. So so that paragraph now reads clear cutting and open space. The maximum area of land that is primarily forest land or the maximum area of wooded vegetation that may be cleared for a commercial solar facility is 10 acres. Additionally, a minimum of 15% of a solar facility's developed land area is to be reserved as undeveloped and natural open space. The acreage to be reserved as open space is to be indicated on the site plan. Areas included in buffers and setbacks shall not be included in the open space provision. I think that that captures. You, you read. You said ten percent. Fifteen percent. Did I say ten percent? I thought you read ten percent. Never mind. I just still uh, tinkering with this in my head. So if I have a an area that I want to develop, uh, let's say to make the numbers beautiful, uh, ten acres. I'm going to be able, with the buffers that we have set up right now. I'm going to be able to develop exclusively 77% of that. So we're talking about that I'm gonna be able to develop a little bit over seven acres. But then on top of that, I have to cut back down 15 acres. So I mean, 15%, which is 1.5 acres. So I'm gonna be able to develop only 6.5 acres. 5.5. 5.5. Even, even harder. So I only wanna be able to develop half of the land, kind of. Yeah, but that goes up the bigger that it goes. So, um, yeah. I would not invest here for sure. <laughs> That's okay with me. But I just. You know, it's restrictive, right? It's going to be very restrictive. Yeah. Okay, are we all set on that one? I am. Just the way we're on. We good? Yeah. All right. I think the next one was 19 use of herbicides to manage vegetation within the development is prohibited. I think, I think we addressed that the last. Okay. Here, let me. Yeah, you did. That's done. Yes. Okay. And we, oh, were we, what was the last one? How about 30 day, within 30 days of completion? So, number 20, are we good there? Yes, we're done. Yeah, we did that. So what else do we need to talk about with this? Then? There, there was one item that uh, I thought you left unresolved and that had to do in, um, not in my memo, but uh, on the working draft uh, on the last page, the uh, inspections. And there was uh, continued discussion was my impression of requiring soil sampling. Oh yeah. And, uh, so. and I had, uh, for you know a routine uh, monthly inspection, I had come up with this language and suggested it. But I have a suggestion for uh, uh, the all the discussion about soil sampling um, made me think that that would not be a bad thing to include as part of the decommissioning plan. That at the time of decommissioning, before the property is either sold or turned into another use, potentially agriculture. Uh, that And this is standard operating procedure for other types of industrial land uses. Um, that an environmental site assessment be required. And this language that I've left up on your desks is what I came up with. Uh, rely on the uh, site for testing and material standard practice for doing environmental site assessments, which is what DEP uses. And, uh, and it would be part of the decommissioning process and decommissioning wouldn't be complete until it was completed and submitted to the code enforcement officer. Richard will be walking like this at that point in time and he can look at Kane and all the drooling out the corners of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that next Wednesday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and that would be a more precise way of ensuring that you would find any 
leaks or discharges of oils or hazardous substances um, and uh, without a, a, you know, a, a soil program, sampling program, random or otherwise, across a, tens of acres of land is not going to do it. It's not, you're going to miss nine times out of 10, you're going to miss the contamination. Um, and so um, this would be a more precise way to do it. It's consistent with standard operating procedures for other industries. And that way, the town's assured that the property is has not been detrimentally contaminated at the end of its life. Well, anyway, so, for your consideration. I really like this idea. As far as soil testing, but shouldn't there be a visual inspection and done every couple of years or something? Oh, no, it wasn't intended to replace the visual inspection, it was to complement it. So the, the monthly phys physical inspection would continue. Yeah. yeah. And this, and, and you know, if they find leaks, they got to report it and clean it up the DP standards and all that. Uh, this would, this sort of branched off from your discussion about soil sampling in the context of an inspection. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the, uh, the better way to incorporate uh, it, to achieve some of the same goals of ensuring that the land has not been detrimentally contaminated, but to do so at the end of its um, life as a solar facility. Can we add um, you, you're making me nervous over there, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> With your smile. <laughs> Well, you sell a house on a lake, you get to inspect a separate system. So can we add on sale and the decommissioning? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Upon sale and decommissioning. So we know each time it's getting sold. Yeah. It's a clean property. Yeah, no, that yeah. I mean a prudent buyer would insist on that anyway. You you see a thing upon sale and or because decommissioning. These, these trade hands a lot okay so okay. just to keep tabs on it okay. so we're not requiring it every month we're not requiring it every year but every time it trades hands yeah we have a clean slate that's, that's kind of interesting you bring that up because as i understand what i've read about a little bit uh, a lot of these uh uh, uh entity or the party funding these uh solar fields uh they're doing it on an investment basis where they get investors come in and uh, they, they put up the funding, and then at some particular point in time, they're going to sell the, the original invest, you know, put these packages together. They're going to sell it mm -hmm. out there in the marketplace. So you're going to see a lot of changing in ownership going on in, the, in a 10 year period. Mm -hmm. well, and we don't know because it's a new product. So that's a good suggestion for that reason. So keep that in mind. So, Craig, I, I did add. I have this language in here, it's about halfway through. It says the environmental site assessment shall be completed in accordance with American Society for Testing and Materials, and it gives the standard practice number and all that. Prior uh, uh, as revised, and prior to the transfer of ownership or change in use of the facility site. Is that adequate or does that need to be beefed up some? No, I didn't actually see that. So prior to the transfer of ownership. It does. And I think it's a good concept because when these transactions occur, we get a, there'll be a track record of what's going on there, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. this is a good thing. Yeah. So you just, what you're talking about, the verbiage is in this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, 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 uh, line. Is, is the line right underneath the, 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 the number okay. of the uh, standard? Okay. Sorry, I didn't see that. Nope. Well, I wrote it and I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, very good. Um, 
Very good suggestion. I like the standard language that's used in here. Excellent. Okay, and I think we addressed the other question too. It does not take the place of the visual, right? Because right. That, that still is gonna happen. This is other stuff. Yeah. It complements that. Okay. Any other loose rounds to cover? Um, the, the one, uh, this wasn't discussed at the last meeting, but, um, and I know we're out of time tonight, but um, well, maybe we'll have more time because of something that we've been discussing with Richard. But the uh, uh, one thing that we never put the, we agreed upon, but we never put pen to paper on was uh, an amendment in the body of the existing ordinance where we would extend the life of the permit for everybody from 12 months to 36 months. Yeah. And in my email, I, I mean, it was a simple change. I, I suggested that, uh, you know, the simple change that would be required to make that happen. You may recall, um, Steve Buckbaum laying out the timeline that he's required to go through and a lot of which, most of which, which is not under his control because it's under the control of the PUC and CMP. Um, that 12 months is just, you know, impossible to, be, to start substantial construction. So I, I, I think we need to um, come to agreement on the language to make that happen. So you're suggesting 36 months? Yeah. And yeah, we had then an extension, a one year extension, so four years for everybody, for everybody, as far as houses and projects. And uh, well, only in the commercial development review, only the commercial. so it apply not just to solar, it right? Apply to any right. other commercial. I mean, I, I thought we had agreed on this, but maybe not. No, not four years. Um, well, what about two years with a year? come back for an extension. That's three years. So that'd be three years. My understanding is that might not be long enough. Because of the PUC, PUC and CMP. CMP. And I mean, he's been negotiating have... with CMP for over 12 months. Well, this, again, um, you can always, you can always change it for uh, at a later date for the solar farm that we find it may be necessary. Well, I'll say this though, you guys don't want to be rejiggering ordinances that you've already worked on mm -hmm. every couple of years. That's, uh, well, that's yeah, I wait, let me finish. Okay. Okay. That's, that's inefficient work. And it also leads to the public doubting whether or not we know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. If we're asking them to continually change ordinances that they just approved. Well, that reminds it's me not, of, it's not, in short, it's not good public policy. Yeah, well, that reminds me of uh, once being at a legislative hearing where a legislator uh, said, well, if we don't get it right this time, maybe we'll get it right next time. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it really undermines your credibility. Uh, okay, that's a good point. However, you gotta keep in mind that solar field is a new product. It hasn't been really tested. We're in an uh, embryonic stage of development. So I think you got to be careful in trying to uh, come up with a, you know, an overall uh, standard. And, you know, I can understand where you come from if you're right, but I think in this particular case, uh, it's a new. Again, I'm thinking at, of it as a new, uh, a new product out there and for service, it's a new product. And uh, as far as development goes, that's a service. What do you want to call it? Think about that. Well, I, I, think, I think one of the other ways to look at it too, though, is it's going to benefit developers of all sorts of commercial projects, not yeah. just solar farms. Right, right. I mean, uh, any developer that, you know, runs into problems with getting financing or getting their environmental permits from the state or the feds would benefit from this as well. Okay. I believe we're putting together a good ordinance. So, yeah. Can I ask something? The extension would only be one year, three year with a one year extension. Were you back to the four year? Yeah, 
just for commercial. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have a good ordinance put together on this. And within that 36 months, they have to start, they must have uh, completed substantial, uh, started substantial, I'm sorry, let me get this right. The term is a substantial start of construction. Well, how do you define substantial? It's defined already in the order. Yep. Um, what is it? For the extension? Substantial. Yeah, within that three year period. Well, is that going to help him? Because he hasn't started anything. Well, that's the way the ordinance is currently written. That, that I didn't I mean, propose, I didn't suggest to change that, but. Um, no, I don't want to change it. No. Um, I mean, the uh, same concept used in the two I mean, land zoning. Substantial is like, say, 50% of that. Like okay. Craig said that'd be awful hard to do. Substantial story. Uh, the completion of 30% yeah. of a permitted structure or use measured as a percentage of estimated total cost. All right, well, fine. So All right. that's, that's, you need to do that in the three year period, but that's not to get the extension. I mean, if they apply for an extension, it's just like hello, goodbye down here. They applied, they had no, no start. So right. the three years, to get an extension, you don't have to start anything. Um, to keep your permit active without getting an extension, then you need your 30%. Um, but I feel confident in the, in the ordinance. So I guess I can agree to you. OK with it then? Thanks, Craig. Sarah, I want to make sure you had a question that was started. We'll make sure we get that. I was just trying to understand uh, Craig's threat on why he will be objectioning to it. But I guess we're already over the hump. I think we're over the hump. Uh, what, 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 what was your thought in, in, in pulling back? Well, three, four years after the fact is quite a long time. I mean, what happens in town after that? I mean, yeah. You know, how do people feel after that? It's four years down the road. Mm -hmm. That's quite a long time for something that was permitted where right now it stands, you can have one year and a one year extension. So, so you you're only tying up two years on a permit. Now we're tying up four years on a permit. So I guess, I, well, I guess I'm trying to understand where you're going with all of it, how, how you've made the curves here. So, you're, you're, you're thinking maybe about the the ambition of the person that was permitted to, that they, they just got the permit and sit on the permit and do nothing, that there's no no pressure from the town for them to finish. That's what you were getting at? No, what possibly having a permit sit out there idle for four years is a long time. I'm going to agree to it. Sure, sure, but so. I understand, but, but why why will be a bad, a bad, bad deal? I, I, I just, I just want to get with your wisdom. Four yeah. years is a long time to have an idle permit set no there because you never know what changes may happen in a town in that four years. You know, it's just a long time. You can't just give a permit out and say, we don't do it in any other thing. So you don't just give a permit out and say, get to it when you want to. We have a 30% rule. You have to start within a 30% within a year okay. right now yeah. to keep it without sure. an extension. Okay. And they can come by and get one extension for one year. So you're only tying up two years on a permit. Four years is a long time on a permit. That's all I'm saying. So you, you might be concerned that they will give the, term, the permit, they will just start it and leave it at 30% and leave that without going anywhere. Um, what happens to the properties beside this property? Well, that is, that, I, that's exactly where we're going you with know, this. That's a good point. For yeah. You. You know, they put it but property value just yeah. go down. So we give them a permit. Yeah. And they didn't and deliver. Then all of a sudden, four years later, there's something that would affect this permit uh -huh. next to it because they hadn't built. So <laughs> four years is a long time to have it floating out there. 
this is this is tough. I think it is tough. It's good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hopefully, and it's just not butter. solar fields. It's going to be all commercial. Right. Yeah. So, or, or you know, use a different example. Um, uh, a gravel pit. You know, uh, another large scale development. A new gravel pit in town, uh, and it takes them three years to get going. And uh, and somebody builds a house next door, doesn't know, you know, the worst would be that they didn't know that the gravel pit was gonna be there because they might have chosen not to build there. Um, but, you know, if we've done our job as a town, they would have been notified at the time of the application. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that wouldn't have happened. There's still a risk there because the, with, you know, let's say they bought, <laughs> whoever develops the house bought it after the application had been approved and, I, I, I just, just a question of how far we can go. Right. Do you want to be interested? Do you want to be interested in two years and then one year? So, uh, okay. I yeah, uh, I follow it. Can we can we grab the four years and do it in like an evergreen steps, meaning that we we will grant um, the two years that you want. But then they can have a, two extensions, one with every one year. No, uh, that's that's it's tying up our time. If we're gonna do if you set on the four years and we're just gonna do a three and one. Um, it was it was an offer, right? Yeah. That, that was an offer. So yeah. but I understand what you're saying. I, I guess I, I appreciate you explaining this. Yeah, it was Thank good you. to hear that. And um I, I want to also say that um other other commercial things which will be affected by this. I think non-solar activities, so some other commercial thing, th their financial model um, doesn't have the same dependencies that this one does. And I, I guess I would expect that other commercial activities would, would be motivated to get going if they could oh. afford it. Not, not good, I'm going to bring up Hello Goodbye again because she must be coming up toward the end of her session. Exactly. Know? I know. Uh, so that's not quite the case. I mean, it didn't work out for her yeah. so far, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know. So can, can we just then said that we want to do the four years for solar development and the, the two plus one for the rest? No, I'd rather do it the same for everybody. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I'm believing in our ordinance, so I'm good with it. Okay. Yeah, me too. I'm good. You good? I'm Sarah? good. Yeah, you guys are good. Pete? I just I wanted to understand the, I, the research. I'd rather, rather shorten the period of time. But anyway, that's, that's me. Okay. It is a long time. It is. Understood. For everybody. I mean, but there was, you know. Yeah. So can we use that language then? Yep. George, yeah. Yeah. So Anthony, do you have that language or some mm -hmm. example? Thank you. Is that it for our discussion on the solar development? So uh, I think just looking ahead, yeah. just remember under our timeline, you guys need to wrap up your work at your next meeting. Yes. And there's still the issue that has not yet been addressed, I believe, of stormwater runoff. Um, I'm not sure I hadn't thought of that because I, I just assumed that the same requirements apply to all other developments. Well, it, unless that's that's the going to be the approach. Yeah, uh, I don't know why it wouldn't be adequate, but uh, the um, uh, there are a couple other things that we need to uh, you know get to it tonight, and we need to we still have on on. Uh, on the, our plate. Uh, one is, uh, are we good with all the new and amended definitions? I think we are, but I don't recall. Second would be, how are we gonna present this to the select board? I made a suggestion in my email that was shared with everybody, uh, but it would mean a fair amount of formatting, reformatting. Um, yeah, I mean, this whole thing is gonna have to be reformatted. It's kind of all over the place right yeah. now. And but 
So working on And then at our next meeting, we got to be prepared to make a final a vote on uh, the you know our final first draft, if you will, yeah. and uh, that we're good with sending it to the select board. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, it, it's all over, but crying after next meeting. Right, which is where we want to be. Well, I want us to be. And in the same token, I think it's also important to look through the the notes, the side margin right. notes on this, just to make sure that everyone's good with. If there are any hanging questions out there, everything's good with where things placed. Ah, all yeah. of that. So gotcha. I mean, that's really important. You know. Yeah. Uh, I think to look at beforehand, and then to go through those quickly at the next meeting. Okay. In order to make sure that everything in that regard is resolved. So, and as to the um, to the stormwater runoff, because uh, that was your question, Anthony. Yeah. Like, have, uh, um, George mentioned, didn't think that we were going to be sol uh, changing anything for solar. I was under the same impression that we didn't want to change because anything. Because a lot of the project is tighter and the restrictions all around. So we already got the stormwater in place for every other commercial. I mean, the standard would be one and the same. They have to, they can't have any more water going off that property than prior to development. So I don't see why we have to mess with it. Yeah, I, I'm totally comfortable with that idea. It's, it's consistent. We've, we've looked at this, I think, pretty thoroughly. Yeah. We're treating the modules like they're roofs P. Right, I mean, it's not just the the base; right? it's, yeah. it's the whole thing. Oh, that would be uh, silly. That would be silly. So, like, you know, I'm not trying to rush it, but I, I think we're in good shape from that perspective. Well, and and not that Anthony mentioned this, but it, you know, that's how I view phosphorus runoff too. We, yeah. you know, that's the standards we have in place is based on what the water quality of the lake is. It doesn't matter if it's a solar facility or a gravel pit or whatever. Right. It applies to all commercial development. Yep. Okay. So, <clears throat> having said that, because I know it's getting late, Anthony, thank you for your time tonight. Um, looking ahead for the 16th, right, when we uh, meet again, we, we need to make sure we can complete the work on the proposed amendments. We want to make sure we're good with the definitions. George, we want to make sure we have an understanding of how to present this to the select board with the reformatting that's going on. And yeah, so, to so look through you, all the comments that, that we have in the. Uh, yeah. And do you want it reformatted before the next meeting, or is that something we'll attend to at the next meeting? Uh, so, in other words, I want to make sure I, you know, if, if, you, if your intent is to vote on something to be presented to the select board as is, then, then the reformatting probably needs to occur before the next meeting, then we can tweak it if need be. Right. Does that make well, sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. It doesn't matter to me so much uh, as long as everybody's had an has gone through and reviewed all the individual substantive tweaks because there've been a number of them <laughs> with each right. each round of that you've sent it out um, because the decision we make today impacted you know something that was in the ordinance put in the ordinance you know a month ago. And and as I noted in my email, the, the uh, language regarding uh, visual screening, uh, when we added the 80% uh, obstruction rule or whatever that was, uh, that start, that created some internal conflicts with the language we had approved previously. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we need to, uh, People need to look at that because if I had offered a way to around that um, to keep both, but you know, make sure everybody's comfortable with it. Um, so we need to make sure we review that part, George, in particular. And any any of the um, uh, comments that are on the <clears throat> marked up thing mm -hmm. to look for any kind of loose rounds. Right? Are there any questions that are out there? Are there anything that's unresolved uh, or so, something that's uh, sticking in your head? Yeah. So, quick question, Richard: Do you have any pending applications at this point? 
You have to stick around for the CEO update. So I'm not going to do that. The reason, <laughs> I'm, the reason I'm asking is simply because I'm just yeah. wondering, do we need to allot for more than an hour at the next meeting? So, so the next meeting, we do have a fairly large one scheduled. Um, I, I think it's pretty big. It's a commercial. Yeah, uh, surely, but it's a, a large project. Um, and other than that, I have three more. So anyway, so I just throw that out there as a potential option is, you know, you may want to. Well, I have to admit, I'm nervous about us being able to complete our work in an hour. I mean, we run across one issue that we initially disagree on. We'll chew up three quarters of an hour just on that. Yeah. So we need, do we need another hint from planning board meeting like yet? Uh, which would be next week. Next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I can handle that. And then the following Thursday is the final meeting for so six. Well, let's find out. You can handle that, Pete. Yep. Craig, how do you feel about that on the night? Yeah, I guess, but I don't see where we're that far off. Of. Well, let me ask you this, Craig. Have you had a chance to look at the, you know, this working draft on the visual stuff? Because I'm just a little nervous about that. Which draft is that? Uh, the one that we got in, uh, in advance of tonight's meeting. Yeah. So I tell you, maybe maybe the best way to approach this is I think I've pretty much got everything incorporated that we talked about tonight. I'll send it out tonight or in the morning. If everyone will commit to looking at it, and if there are any red flags, then maybe the, you know uh, a special meeting should be called. If there aren't any red flags, then maybe we allot an hour and a half at the next meeting. I like that suggestion. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think an hour and a half would, if we said an hour and a half, um, it seems to me we should be if we're efficient about how we conduct ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, you know. Um, Go on a lot of tangents, then uh, we should be able to finish it up. So I didn't see that. So what's your concerns with it? Well, just that I thought there was it didn't reflect uh, it, that it uh, by adding that what uh, what um, uh, Dan Newman had uh, suggested uh, the eighty percent obstruction mm -hmm. conflicted with some of the other requirements we had already approved, and so I tried to. Uh, come up with language to deal with that conflict. Uh, and I'm just, I just want to make sure everybody takes a look at that, make sure they're comfortable with it. So, because so there's been a lot of time. So, so George did explain that in the notes of what you got yeah. and, what, and what I'll be sending out tonight as well. So that Yeah, be, so Craig is uh, reading to think about it. Uh, it's on page nine. And you'll see my, my comments on the, on the uh, side. Anyway, that, yeah, so. Okay, so can, thank you very much, George. So can we, uh, uh, I wanna make sure we, we um, provide Craig with a copy that you can read. I'm, I'm gonna send it out again when I get home. As a PDF? As a PDF and a Word document. Okay. So, so knowing that Craig has had some issues with that, I've been sending everything out as both Word and PDF. Thank you very much. So Craig, can that work for you? Yes. Excellent. So and so just look at just look for the the George's notes on the side, Craig. That's that'll be the important part of that, that discussion. And Pete, can that work for you to have both Word and PDF? Um either one. Yeah, yeah. Either one you can read, right? Yeah, I mean, right. Yeah. PDF just, I can read. Yep. Not word. Okay, great. All right. So if we do that, then if we can <clears throat> commit to review that information, those comments. If there are any red flags, we bring them up, right, beforehand, like ASAP. If not, we're looking at an hour and a half on the 16th, right? Then we want to wrap this thing up. And Anthony, did you get a, do you have a good answer for formatting? Do you, 
I think so. Yeah. I'll figure it out. Because I'm thinking head to bed and go for it. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm going to send out tonight will not be formatted, right. and then I'll work on the formatting in the in the intro. Right. I think that will work. And George, uh, oddly enough, I don't have access to the town manager email any longer. So, <laughs> oh, did, did I use that last time? No, no. Well, but but you sent out an email about how you thought this could be worked into the commercial development review ordinance. Right. Once I email tonight, if you'll send me back my personal email address, that email that'd be helpful. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because if you start one to the town manager, you're not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. So is it the email that I sent out previously that you want? You sent one out that, that you said um, you made a suggestion about how this could most easily be worked into the commercial development. Review. Oh, okay. So, okay. Yep. You remember that? Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you, Anthony. Yes. Have a great night. Who are you rooting for? Uh, Edmonton. I'm a, I'm a big Jesus fan. <laughs> See it. <laughs> so, <clears throat> your suggestion is the roads and residentials. Yes. I mean, Example, should we set a standard like 80% visual obscure from public and private roads right at a height of four feet in the first floor, respectively? By what do you mean by that? Um, so, if in that particular instance, the issue I was trying to raise was that. Um, if somebody, uh, let's say they're developing in a field or even in a woodlot that requires some plantings, those plantings, even um, once they get substantial height, are not going to, you know, from the, they're not going to be as high as the second story. So we have to decide at what elevation uh, is the 80% going to apply to. Um, you could have 80% at six feet, but only have 60% at 25 feet or 30 feet. Um, and likewise from a road, you know, I mean, I guess what I'm suggesting is we need to think about where are people going to be seeing the solar facility from or looking at in that direction from. When you're driving by and passing by a car, it isn't at 12 feet, it's right. at like five, four or five yeah. or whatever it is. Likewise, in a house, um, you know, are you going to be really looking at it from the bedroom or upstairs bedroom, or are you going to be mostly looking at it from the kitchen or the deck? Or because uh, I, I don't know how we could ever get 80% obscurification or whatever that term is at all elevations. The reasoning. For that was so they'd be leaning towards cedar trees and evergreen trees for the screening. Right. Don't block that. Um, you know, four feet is definitely not enough. Um, I, I, was, I think it should just be from residents and roads. So if they have to plant bigger trees near a residence, that's fine. But if they plant smaller trees towards the road, and any back properties not being included. Would be my, I'll, I'll look at it again. Okay. I, I, and yeah, and I, it just didn't reflect uh, what I my understanding was of the compromise we came up with. Because you may recall, I had said I would agree to the setback from all property lines, regardless of whether it's developed property or not. But I. I only wanted to see a actual vegetative buffer if 
what's on the other side of that common property line is a, an approved subdivision, not a undeveloped wood lot or whatever. Well, we got the buffer from the property line, so that can, you know, that can just remain a natural buffer, and maybe that's what we need to word whatever the natural buffer is. But the eighty percent should just be from the residents and roads and private drives. Yeah, I just don't know how we'll be able to achieve that though at all elevations. I, I don't want to establish a standard that's sort of a make believe standard. Well, if there's a house or sock, like take take Steve Osho's. Yeah. Um, so he's going to plant some tall, tall trees along that property line where the house is. He hasn't there anyways. Yeah, along the road he has. I mean, there's some natural woodland there, but I doubt that provides 80% obscures that. Um, no, so he'll have to play, he would have to plant some more next to the road and the house, but the rest of the property back in the back, he wouldn't have to. I mean, it, but I, I, so, it would not be instant, though, is it? We want this buffer, but it instantly it will not be 80%. They can plant it and maybe. Have you driven by Farmington? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's no buffer there. about, There's no buffer. Well, they planted it. Yeah. Did you notice about 40% of it is dead? Yeah. Dying? Well, in, the, in Augusta, in Augusta. And, I mean, not that the shrubbery that they planted was going to do anything anyway, but the little ones are all dead too. But, you know, I mean, even if they'd done a good job, I don't know how. Um, Make it practical. You want to make it yeah. practical. Or achievable. I mean, unless we're going to require planting of one hell of a lot of full size trees. Yeah, this is, a, I was going to go to that. So you can put, you can transport full size trees. There's just a lot of money too. It, it, it was just something that, you know, came to mind that, and as a practical matter of, and something that was enforceable. So then, you know, the portion of it is that you can plant them little, but it's going to take like five, six years maybe to to reach. Well, and I, you know, I agree with your suggestion earlier, Craig, of that it shouldn't be just four foot trees; it should be six foot trees. That if they're planting them, um, I'm fine with that. But uh, you know, I, I just I, I was I was thinking of like I can see through, despite the fact that um. From my deck, um, uh, I don't know, 500 feet away from the from the uh, uh, tree service, I can see his red trucks through the trees. You know, I don't know if it's 80 percent obscured or or what percentage it is, but you know, it it really takes a lot for somebody not to be able to see something that has any color to it or whatever. So, um, you got a feel. Then you have hardwood trees on the other side of the couple evergreens. Well, the reasoning for this was so they plant trees are obscure. Um, and they will have a thick canopy. Right. And, and I agree with that. It's, right. it's a, uh, at eight feet or whatever. I, I agree with that. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever with the 80%. I'm just, I don't know how we'll achieve it at you know 20 feet or um, we don't have to um, you know you have two feet of foundation you have eight feet of wall so that's 10 feet to block a view from a window on the first floor of a house. Okay. Well, then maybe that's the solution. I, that's the, I was just raising the question. Right. So, so to say to say uh, to achieve the 80, uh, 80 percent uh, obscuration is that the right word? Um, yeah. At ten foot height. At, at ten at foot 10 height. Feet, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And that would accommodate 
I, I think because they're going to grow eventually and cover the second floor window as well. Right. And so, right. But I would be fine. I mean, the second floor is your bedrooms. You're going to bed. It's dark. Uh, some people do have a lot, but. I mean, we take a close look at that. Crazy, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's probably where I'll go with it. Um, well, I, I, I certainly would agree with that. Me too. How, how about the, uh, the type of tree? I mean, in the wintertime, you go with, you know, maple or oak, you know, the leaves will be off. So. They can't, so it won't work. Right. So that's why we want that 80%. Right. So they will use cedars, they'll use okay. firs, and they'll use okay. stuff like that. Right. Okay. Yeah. That'll grow to, in. to achieve that, a lot of times we're going to have to be requiring them to plant conifers right. in addition to the natural wood one. Right. right. I'm going to go on the tree business. <laughs> just I know. follow around solar developers and say, hey i got a deal for you <laughs> so if you think that we can agree on something similar to that um yeah then i think we'll be fine with the hour and a half i think so yeah no i know no problem with that at all for me okay and i'm glad you found that too the uh well potential it, conflict uh, i was just visualizing it in my head you know and how do you measure it? You know, I, I know in forestry that there's a special device you use for measuring the thickness of the of the overstory, and it, all it is is a 180 degree globe kind of thing mirror. All right. What? So, all right. We have a half acre visual from from a lake. I'm going to stick it down. Yeah, if you're up above, you're going to see the whole thing analyzed. Um, yeah, all right. I'll, I'll review it. Yes. Okay, good. I just wanted to highlight it. That's all. Thank you. Good discussion. So, could we all make sure to review that? And then, if we have anything to talk about, email, email it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Are we okay to move on to the new business? Are we going to meet next, next week? No. Not at this time. Okay. We're planning on trying to make sure to commit to go through the review, yep. the comments, right. any flags, throw them up. Yeah. But I think right now, at least one thing that could have been an issue, we've, yep. we're we're making progress. We're going the right direction with it. Right? Okay. So thank you. So are we okay to move on to new new business, everybody? Thank you. All. all right. I know it's getting late, Pete. All so. right. I know. <laughs> so new business for tonight, we have A, commercial applications. The Sheridan Corporation, um, I guess, are the applicants. Location is 28 Old Route 27. Uh, map 4, Lot 37. Purpose, construct a 14,540 square foot pre-engineered metal building to create a new precast production facility. This is a non-shoreland conforming lot so this is this is at gagney and son it is um and so <clears throat> before we delve into this george was talking to me prior to tonight's meeting and he seems to recall that this past winterish fall time this had already been approved yeah and i i obviously wasn't privy to that so it's here but uh so he was indicating that perhaps it's just going to be something that I would take care of now. Oh, okay. So I needed your input as far, as far as where you got with this. I looked real quick at the uh, permits from 2021 and I could not find this particular one. That doesn't mean it's not in the system somewhere. Uh, Gary did some odd things and paperwork. So I have, to, I have to dig around and find stuff. Yeah. So George, would you like to elaborate on what you recall happening from the last yeah, time um, of this game? Sure. Because nobody ever said to me, we already submitted this. This is just a resubmission. Yeah. Uh, I, I was assuming this is a brand new uh, building. Uh, so just to recap, the general process is that for something that triggers the commercial development review ordinance, we do our application completion, uh, application uh, uh, review and uh, approval with conditions, possibly, possibly not, and then the, uh, and do our findings of fact with any conditions. It goes to the code enforcement officer, at which time the code enforcement officer 
issues is able to issue the building permit. And I looked at this and, and I thought, geez, I wonder if this is something different. And then when I looked at the drawings, I realized it was what we'd already approved under the commercial development review ordinance. And so I believe this is just an application for the actual building permit, which is entirely within the purview of Richard. Um, you know, the only caveat really is to make sure that, um, you know, there's no conditions on the R approval that would impact uh, his issuance of the, not the issuance so much, but uh, requiring him to put a condition of approval on it, on the building permit. But I, I don't think, I don't recall, but it would be in the findings of PAC all the same. Yeah. And that's why I, I, I suggested to him that I, I don't think this is, you know, a, um, yeah, we, an we, application we, for we, us. It, yeah. It's an, actually an application for him. Well, so I, why would you have to grab a building permit after you get approved for the for the whole thing for us? Yeah. And that, was, that was a done deal. So, okay, so he, that sounds like you don't have the paperwork. You don't know. So, okay, yeah. Gary, Gary misfiled it. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I yeah, okay. Nice research. Research. This is the first time it brought up to me that yeah. this has okay. already been worked. As long as we double check that, that it's certainly, it looks like it because the penny roads are here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. As long as we double check, or you can double check somehow that this is the same building that we approved, why do they need to go? I mean, a building permit should just be automatically issued, right? Right. Well, well if you don't it, approve the building in a planning board, well, 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 why would an issue at that planning board? Well, maybe, maybe it wasn't a process and then Gary disappeared now. I thought, I thought when we approved the permit, we approved the building as well. Yeah, because that's part of the permit. Because yeah. that's all yeah. the storm yeah. runoff and all that. But we don't have the authority to issue the building permit. That's precisely it. Right. Right. So, so we have our findings of fact uh, that go to the CEO oh, to say, from oh. our perspective, okay, because he's the only one in town that can issue the building permit for, in a commercial. Uh, right? Okay. All right. So, but we said we went through this, yes. the commercial one, and said, yeah, this is a go. Yeah. Okay. And and when I'm looking at this, just like you said, Craig, this is the one off the Penny Road. There's that building right there. There's the hillside behind it. I remember talking about all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. with this one. Isn't the one that the one that they have the uh, we talk about the uh, the trash cans the the trash bins yes in the back yes. Of it. yes yeah you know, yes. yes yes so so I will next week I will search for the original yep and then review it compare it with this one okay. look at the findings of that and see what if any uh, provisions are in there and okay. uh, I'll I'll go from there. Uh, and I, I'm guessing that I'm going to find this permit signed by all of you. Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. No, so it should be at the findings of fact and law with our signature. Okay. Or Peter's signature. And there wasn't yeah. much conditions for the Senate. No, I, they made right. me any. I, I just yeah, can't I remember. Right. I, I mean, it was a pretty straightforward, clean yes. cut application. Oh, yep. So um, it, it might have been earlier this year. No, and no, I, it was it was in the fall. I think I do not remember. I, I remember. I thought I thought it was in the fall because it was just when we came back uh, from Zoom meetings, and I think we opened well, we there opened this last so summer. Yeah. <laughs> it was sometime in the fall. It was it was just right before. The one we did this uh, year was the retail. Pass. The new uh, retail. I remember doing that this year. Okay. Retail, I did the funding special. So okay. I think that might be what Julie. It was never mind. Was, yeah, never mind. <laughs> it was before. It was, I, I know you know I might be wrong, but I thought it was in the fall. <laughs> and did Gary yeah, passed away in September. In the fall, yeah, right? and that rebuilt retail building the front of the back. You can tell from the back yeah. agendas. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely dig around, especially in the future, just and see if I can so dig I'm going to suggest maybe September. Okay. Because if Gary, I can't remember the day. See, when you're my age, time flies. So it was like Labor Day or something. I'm not very sure. Well, no, we had to call the call. But yeah, yeah, Gary was probably pretty sick at that point. Yeah, I can be it. Hopefully, I can come up with some. 
Excuse Matter of fact, I'll look at the assessor's file. Maybe yes. the assessor's file. I didn't call you any. In the assessor's file. You found it, you didn't. Under yes. Yeah. So that might be a good sign. So, yeah, just moving forward, that's what I'm going to do. And then um, if we have to revisit it, we will. Okay. And yeah, give, give me a shout when you get it, when you find it, please. Sure. That'd be great. Because I can go back through some old notes. And I stuff. wanted to think the top. There was some yeah. old. Yep. Uh, and, yeah. And, and, part, the end, yeah. and Sheridan, Sheridan did a good job presenting the information I, I recall, too. Uh, well, I think we already Sheridan. had a stormwater management system in place at DEP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was an easy so, one. So this is going to be in process and best wishes finding that. I think once you see it, you'll say, oh, this is what was approved and you'll, you'll see it. Okay. All right. So if we can move on from that one, the next one is the CEO update. Um, <clears throat> so did you find the old commercial app yet? No. Just the update is no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so essentially, I got uh, three applications of the fourth being completed. Next week will be Kathleen Thompson. Uh, they are renovating one of the structures at one of the camps here in town. I mean, it's, I mean, to somebody like Craig, it may not look like it's that big of a deal, but somebody like me, it looked like it was a pretty big deal. They're essentially taking the whole building down and reconstructing it. And it's actually going to be a little bit more conforming, I think. Um, it is in the shoreland zone. So, um, and I think that things will run a little bit smoother after this. Commercial solar and it's done. At least we will have that hour to take care of permits. So I don't, I don't feel as going back right now. I feel like we're, we're doing good. I've issued like three permits this week, non shore lands. So, uh, I think we've done, uh, are done 53, 54 total this year. Wow. We have actually all of us combined <laughs> and uh, I think 49 plumbing permits. So uh, I just sent the select board an update as to everything that's going on. With me and you guys are obviously very pleased. I didn't include you folks in that, um, but they are now. So, um, and walk on town, our complaints, uh, moorings. Moorings? What's that? What's going on with that? Uh, people putting their moorings in front of other people's property. Well, that just passed, right? What's that? That just passed. Or what? What, what did somebody mooring? We have a mooring ordinance yeah, that passed. passed. Uh, is it two summers ago? Yeah, I think so. About, yeah. 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 Oh. It was the summer before COVID. So it was like 2019. Oh, Jim. Okay. So who, who regulates that? You do, right? Right. All right. <clears throat> so kind of give me an overview of that. I just kind of, I, I kind of heard about that. So the way that the ordinance reads is essentially <clears throat> if I have a home here and I have 200 feet of frontage on the water. Inside that 200 feet, nobody can put their mooring out to 200 feet. Oh, okay, out 200 feet. So it's like it's like you have property pins here and here. Right. From there on out, straight through the water, nobody can put their mooring out, out to 200, 200 feet. feet. Right. Okay, what if, the, what if it's 100 feet? Property. Oh, it doesn't matter. Whatever side of the property, you have 50 feet, then that's your property. In other words, it's essentially extending your property into the water. I don't know. Another 200 feet. 200 feet. Okay. Out to 200 feet. But 201? No. But you gotta kind of judge that with the property line. So right. you know the property goes like this over here isn't this. Right. So, so you have to take your property line and extend that out into the water, right. both sides, yep. to figure out yep. if this is so you hope uh, I hope like heck every time I show up is a pin or something. Yeah. And one of the situations I'm dealing with right now is there was a pin when I first got went to inspect this area. I went back today and there's no pain. <laughs> and there's a lawyer involved and it's it's getting kind of complicated, but um, it's being dealt with. Uh, the gentleman who's encroaching is being very good about it. So, um, and I think that in the future, we probably need to include dark, a dark ordinance in the morning or a separate ordinance because the thing was that this gentleman's dock was encroaching as well as his morning. And he said to me, but we don't have a dog for this. I said, well, you damn right, we don't have anyone. So I, 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 technically, I don't have a leg to stand on from the dog because I have nothing to, to back. However, I can make him move his morning. He moved it, but not enough. And I know where the pin was. 
uh, because they're the owners of the property put their dock right on the pin line. So I know exactly where it was, and I'm, I have a feeling the owners of the property would be paying for what the piece of Well, we do have some sort of work verbiage that the dock can't impede. Traffic is impede on other people's property, though. Don't, don't There's we? nothing in the morning one. Well, it won't be in the morning one. No, it's just in the morning one. I, I wouldn't know. Um, yeah. Wouldn't like Charlie and Zoning. No, I couldn't find anything. I'd and there's no, there is no dock. dock is, it state, is it a state? I have not gone that far. It might be, there may be such a state statute. Because I know you can't. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure you can't take your dock and put it out in front of another property. Right. It's got to extend from your property, and it can't impede traffic. I know that. Right. And uh, you may want to just check to see what the state's rules are. We don't have an ordinance, yes, but I think we just abide by what the state's standards are. Yep. Um, anyway, that's uh, a lot of uh, block, quite a bit of building going on, mostly uh, extensions and decks, sheds, a few new houses, but not many. So well, I had a question on the, um, you said that one of the camps here, what, what particular camp is uh, that? I wish I can, I, I can tell you before you leave the whole paperwork. You want to know? Yeah, I just kind of curious. Yeah. Is that public information to me? It is, I just don't remember the camp. <laughs> what about is it? It's not Moden. Uh, As you say, is it Moden? No, it isn't Moden. <laughs> and I got to complain about them too. So they're, I guess they're putting in more and more lighting and the neighbors are Concerned about it. when the oh. kids get there, it's going to light up like a football field. Mm -hmm. They're going to be blinded at night. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a baseball field? There was no, there was no specificity to it. It just said more lighting. Just so you know, that baseball field got approval under the commercial development with new ordinance. With lighting? I don't recall. Okay. Yeah, but but it did come to us. Uh, yeah, and then down in the village. It was an after the fact permit application. Uh, yeah. And down in the village, uh, the barn down there, they're renovating the inside of it. And uh, Oh, down in the village? I need a lot of calls about that. As of right now, I went in there yesterday and they're reconstructing the inside, which I had nothing to do with. But uh, there is a shower enclosure in there. No fixtures, no water running to it yet. So when I spoke to Doug Frame in the past and said that he knew about the plumbing part, he's gonna do with the plumbing. He agreed to get one, but uh of course the the uh native the rest is down there wondering <laughs> what are you doing with him what if he's gonna have a commercial entity he's not supposed to, there's no parking, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So gotta keep an eye on that. And then some of you may have noticed um where the coffee cart is going inside of that building that we yeah. uh, I discussed there's a sign outside that says a coffee cart coming soon. So there was an actual complaint about that. It's not about the sign, the same yeah. board sign. Because it was our it was an automatic assumption that the coffee cart was going to be outside. Mm -hmm. So I had to take the time to go down there, speak with the owners, and verify that it was not going. You know, and this is just stuff that takes up my time. Yeah, which yeah. I don't yeah. have enough of. Yeah. And it's just getting right. it's getting crazy. And some of these people are like like I get called about dogs yesterday because Trish Davis, dog catcher? Trish, yeah, apparently yeah. Trish Davis wouldn't do anything about these crazy dogs that are running around and they're growling at people. You know. mm -hmm. Anyway, I got rid of that. We're all back. Yeah. Don't don't yeah. we have a control animal control person? Yeah, she just gave a resignation, and according to the lady who was complaining, Trish said she gave a resignation. Doesn't want to work. She's going to care. Okay. Silly stuff. So it's a matter that we need to take up with uh, the fickle public. public. It's all, it's, that's all my. I got that. Right, plate, right, right. I don't want anything to do with that. Good, good. Oh. It's not your, not your monkey, not your circus. Not Talk your to the selectmen about the dogs. <laughs> tell them. Yeah. Yeah, really, because yeah. they'll do. This is the elected officials. We don't have a dog catching. So they'll have to. Well, have yeah. to find it anyway. Dangerous dog. You can call the sheriffs. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Up to the press, and that's complaining. Right. Yeah, and it's not Richard's thing. 
So no, I passed. It. I passed the ball. Right. So I have a question for you when you're done. I'm done. Um, you did put a comment in here about uh, if there's time to discuss the language conflicting between yeah, yeah. this and well, that. I didn't know if you wanted to take time for that or not. Uh, so I, mean, I, think we we I definitely think we should. Okay. Yeah, we, we have, everybody should have three sets of meat, by the way. To yeah. <laughs> this um, con conflicting language, apparently, between two ordinances. Right. Um, yeah. And so what it was in the CEO update, so he's yeah, saying that. Oh, it's just the language with the huh. yeah, issue is. Yeah. Uh, I just want to make sure I get myself straight here. So, so the multi-family dwelling ordinance, uh, to my knowledge, has not been revamped, and it is dated in 1978. Right. So a woman wants to put Two duplexes on a property. And according to the multifamily family uh, dwelling ordinance, I think it's the second page you are looking at. Under uh, multi unit housing definition, it says, shall mean a structure or structures located on a single lot, which structures are designed or used to house three or more families. And if we look at the block coverage, which I think I included the, the page here. Uh, do, 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 do. I don't know if I have that. Should be towards the back behind the minutes. I have the I have two pages, and the first one comes from multi-family dwelling unit. One? Yeah. So where are we on that? Okay, so the multi-family dwelling, I just read to you the multi-unit housing definition. Yep. And in the um, minimum lot standards page, I gave you page eight. Following page. Yeah. Uh, B, let's see. Okay, this is... Uh, It says under C, second paragraph, um, says no new residential dwelling unit shall be permitted, which would result in a number of residential dwelling units per lot exceeding one per 40,000 square feet of lot area. But this, the first one that I read says, I used to house three or more families. And I guess I just don't perhaps understand that, understand the differences. No, you're not the only one. Um, it's a little confused. Then, in the minimum lot size after the sentence you read, it goes on not more than two <laughs> residential yes. dwelling units shall be permitted in any one structure. Yeah, that's where I was getting. And uh, I, so I that's understand telling that. me that you can have a duplex, and so two residential units in one structure. And then, but this, but the multifamily dwelling ordinance says. Uh, to house three or more families. Mm -hmm. Structures are designed to use to house three or more families. You cannot do that. Well, I guess you could. I mean, if you have two families living in one side of the duplex, I suppose. But it, so it's a little confusing. And the woman who, the woman actually did her due diligence and was asking these kind of these questions. But I'm looking at, because she only read the multi-family dwelling ordinance. I took out the lot size ordinance. And I started doing a little research and I, I came up with you know, what the heck. I don't, I don't get what, what's going on here and what takes precedence and what she is allowed is not allowed to construct. Um, my understanding was better of the uh, minimum lot size because, as I understood from when I started, you could not have more than uh, two residential dwellings. On, <clears throat> In one structure, so you can have a duplex, you cannot have a quadruplex, right? For right. Uh, but this one's saying three or more families, and I don't right. really you can get four families in one side of a duplex. Right? Well, and, and up, but, you know, the that same the multi family dwelling ordinance uh, on C on the page that you gave us, no dwelling shall contain more than eight one units, so it could be up to eight dwelling units, right? There we go, right? so yeah. Um, 
And then, um, and then on, on the following page, to, just to come back, things a little more. Uh, uh, Multi-family dwelling units, show me the following criteria. This is under section six, uh, page two. It says the law area shall be one acre. Well, one, one acre is more than 40,000 square feet, which is what the uh, minimum lot size requirements says. Mm -hmm. So is it one acre or is it 40,000 square feet? Because we're talking about a difference of what? 3,516 3, feet. Right. So, so I, I guess I just needed some direction in this. Uh, you know, I, I need to be able to give her an answer. Um, well, the, the only thing I unfortunately can tell you about this is as a general legal principle, when you have two ordinances in conflict with one another, the more stringent it right. applies. Um, and I mean, I've long advocated that the multifamily dwelling unit should be uh, repealed, um, but that never happened. Um, and that they just be dealt with as a subdivision, because many of them are subdivision as well. Um, the uh, um, but then you'd be eliminating apartment buildings, um, you know, like steward apartments or apartments down here, where affordable no. housing is getting so so lacking. Mm -hmm. There's no affordable housing around. Yeah. No, I, I agree. So we do need I, apartment those, those apartments, by the way, were approved under this multi dwelling unit. Um, and in fact, that this ordinance <laughs> exists because of when there was a flurry of apartment houses proposed in Belgrade down on 27, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the ones that um, uh, the days did. Um, yes. So, <laughs> my suggestion. Seems that we have the lawyer available to us on whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have him look at two ordinances and see what he yeah. has to say about it. Yeah, that. because, if, and then B, right below what I read is another uh, contradiction. It says, lot frontage roads, public private, shall exceed by 50%. The Belgrade minimum lot size ordinance requirements for each building. So that would make it 300 because our minimum lot size is 200. So if that's exceed by 50 percent, that'd be 300. So hmm. you have to have three 300. But I like your idea, Craig, about uh, sending both of these ordinances to the attorney. Yes. Seeing what he, he or she thinks. Yeah. Yes. That's a good idea because and when I read this multifamily, it really did come across as applying more towards apartment buildings than the duplexes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And the banking business using that term, the real estate business is yeah. a multi that's apartment business. That's right. Yeah. Great right. Right. with a shortage of affordable housing in Belgrade. Uh, uh, you know, these kinds of developments are needed. Yes. Yeah. And I'm kind of interested in what to find out the results. So well, absolutely all, I think we all want to hear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the input. And I will follow yeah, up. Yeah. Thank you. you know, in terms of the and you see this maybe even in state um, law or regulations, the sloppy use of 40,000 square feet equaling that acre. Right. Yeah. No surveyors are ever going to certify that, you know. But, you know, I mean, in this case, if they meant 40,000 square feet in, in the uh, dwelling unit as an acre, they should have said that. Right. Did. And you know, three thousand five hundred sixty feet could be a, a big difference. Well, on the shoreland, it would be a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> certainly. It costs you hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy. Right. Right. Exactly. All right. So yeah. I will follow up with the lawyer, and I'll uh, certainly uh, when I get a response, I'll let her all know. Okay. What Thank you. Become the best. Thank you, Richard. Anything else from no, sir? That yeah. is it updates. I got one question. Sure. So, so far, uh, what, what, what is the magical moment for you to say, uh, we have a bad law? Yeah, what? A bad law of, of uh, applications. What is the number that, that raise that flag for you? I don't necessarily have a number because mm -hmm. I look at each one and, and determine its difficulty. 
Okay. So, an example, uh, the one next week, as I said, Craig might look at it because he's a contractor. And I think everything just works for him. For me, it's not working. Like, it makes sense, but I think it's it's something that you, the planning board would want to delve into a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so, then, you know, uh, the simple one, the ramp, for instance, that we approved the other week, uh, that to me is simple. So, I kind of just weigh the, the toughness of what we're dealing with and how in depth it is. So, it's not really a number to say that I answer your question, but it's more of a, dip, a level of difficulty. Okay. How much time do I take? Exactly. So he has an algorithm he goes through. Yeah, yeah, right. Richard's complexity I'm factor. Just, I just want to. Uh, it's, it's, just it's Google just, it. Google yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I just have, have, a, have a hand, hand, hand rule thing yeah. that, you know, pick your mind with it. So I have a reference myself. No, and I kind of can shuffle things. An example is I've had a, a shoreline application quite some time now. I approached the gentleman because he's never bad here, and like everybody else does. And I said, so when do you start, want to start construction? And he said, oh, not to the fall. So if you want to suck me off a little bit, that's fine. <laughs> I said, well, that's great. And uh, matter of fact, oddly enough, the Captain Thompson one that we'll be doing next week, they can't even start until after Labor Day, but they will be bugging me and bugging me to get this on board. Yeah. Well, what if it takes this long? What if we have to go back three times? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's possible, of course. So. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm probably overreacting to looking at this the whole plan. Craig would probably look at it. Well, ha, ha, it's just simple. <laughs> Who knows me? Um, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Boy, you guys did me a lot of homework. <laughs> what homework do you got? Oh my God. No, no, what do, you, what do you have home for tonight? What, what do you have to do for it? It's going to get with a lawyer yeah, about the the lawyer. things. Oh, right? okay. Yeah. yeah. Just going to find that permit. Got to find, find the, the old permit. Yeah. yeah. He's exactly. Let us know. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, well, no, I'm just thinking. Yeah. So you get, get. I was being a little facetious. Yeah, I know. But get it together with a lawyer. You let them know. And it'd be a while. You're not going to get. The lawyer's not going to give you a quick answer. They never right. do. Right. right. I've dealt with lawyers so all the time. So <laughs> they never at least you, you covered yourself. Okay. You, you, right. you sent them a e quick email or you talk to them on the phone for it, give them a follow up email, and then you're covered. Don't worry about it. Really, I tell you, you can really do it. Yeah. It's not a lot of homework. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Appreciate your time in it in advance. Thanks for your homework for chicken. All right. Um, may we move on to old business, which we have minutes from the May 5th, 12th, and 19th meetings. But we already did the fifth. Um, I don't remember. As I remember, with the fifth was that um, Greg was concerned about the numbers that were setbacks, and what was called setback, and what was called uh, buffer. Right, but I, I thought I just. Twelve and dealt with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it again, be I don't remember. I 
I couldn't find anything showing that we did, so I just included them anyway. Okay. Uh, we cover our own butts. So in the event that we have not done these already once, um, have people had a chance to go through them? Any edits or remarks? No, Craig, Sarah, George, no. Okay. Uh, I would like to <clears throat> do these one at a time if we could. So I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as written. For May 5th. Thank you very much. And a second. Second. And seconded. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, any more discussion? Mm. All those in favor of approving the May 5th minute, minutes as written. So Craig and Pete, you weren't here, so we're not going to ask you to vote. Sarah. Yes. George. Yes. And I am in favor. So four in favor, none opposed. Next are the May 12th minutes. I have a comment about that in a minute. Um, have, uh, oops. Are we all good on the minutes? Or have people had a chance to review the May 12th minutes? No. Okay. Are there any suggested edits? None for me. Sarah, no. Craig, anything? Um, so it says also agree on the 50 foot buffer in the past. So the buffer wasn't back to So you're on page two where it says, um, it also agrees on a minimum 50 foot buffer along property lines, 200 comma, 200 feet along public roads and 250 feet along common property lines with the existing residential dwelling unit, etc. cetera. buffer, that's not the setback, correct? That's right, the setbacks were already- 125 feet. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. See, actually, I think that's wrong. Is, does the wording need to be clarified? Well, it, it, uh, uh, this is what I phrased before, because uh, I, I tried to make myself clear that uh, property lines with approved subdivisions. We agreed on all property lines, because 
cut the 250 and a half to 125 for a setback from all part of the line. Was my understanding. Yeah, what, what I had said at the meeting multiple times was that I would agree to the 125 foot setback if the 50 foot buffer was limited to the common property line with a subdivision, approved subdivision, undeveloped or otherwise. Oh, all right. So it'd be a 125 foot setback, but the buffer would only be where. Yeah. 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 So, so that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So to clarify that, and so we have it documented and memorialized, how can we edit this to get to the intent and spirit of what you're saying? Uh, There's only 20, 25 foot buffer that would cover both, both sides of the, of the property line. I'm not sure, Sarah. I think we're, we're on the spot, George. We're about the 50 foot, and then yeah. to be put in the qualifier. Yeah. Uh, uh, also agree, I guess, on a minimum 50 foot buffer along property lines in common with the approved subdivision. Ooh, that's pretty good. Maybe, maybe. Can you say that one more time? Because I think that's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, also agree. So it also agreed on a minimum fifty foot buffer along property lines, in common with an approved subdivision. Ooh, I like that. In common. Craig, does that make sense? So, so that means that it's going to be twenty five feet on one side of the property line. One side of the property line and one 25 seat on the on the other side of the property line to make a total of 50. No, no, it's all on the on the development. We we have nothing to say what's on the other side of the property line. So this is buffers, not setbacks. Right. So we're not talking setbacks here. So what he was just saying, so 50 foot buffer, it won't be on the back property where there's nothing approved. It will just have a setback. Back there, okay, but not a buffer, right? okay. So the buffer will just be about around residents, which is the 250 the 200 from the road and 50 foot from an approved subdivision. Okay, right. understand. Thank you. And then right. beyond the approved subdivision, if it's just the back lot, there doesn't have to be a buffer, okay. but there still has a setback. All right, thanks. Does that, does that help? Mm. Okay. Thank you, George. So that, I think that's a good sentence to include. Um, so are you suggesting that, uh, so the sentence in the middle of that paragraph that said, it starts off with, it also agrees on a minimum 50 foot buffer and then how you said it? Yeah, do uh, you want me to reread it? Sure. Uh, and just to be clear for the record, we're on line, on the second page, line one, two, three, four, five, uh, starting at, uh, at the far right, it also agreed versus agrees uh, on a minimum 50 foot buffer along property lines in common within an approved subdivision, comma, 200 feet along public roads and 250 feet along common property lines with an existing residential dwelling unit, comma, uh, though no more, well, and on it goes. Yeah. I like that. That can work. Sarah, you good? Yep. good? Craig, you good with that? So then down below public recreational and scenic resource to include the lakes, the minor hill road, highest portions of every golf club and elevations of 600 feet or greater accessible by public road. I don't remember the public road, but we're also missing the West Road. Um, and did we agree on 600 or 450? It was uh, 450 by the golf course so that it would capture with the parking areas 
because we didn't have a name for it. I mean, right. I don't know if you recall that. We, there was no name on any of the maps. Right. And then the West Road got captured by the uh, 600 foot uh, elevation. So it was rather only, than by name. So it's only 450 feet for the Boundary Lakes Golf Club? Yeah, yeah. So that, um, you know, it captures those parking areas where the public can go. They allow the public to go to get a view of the lake. Not to mention their own clientele. Does that make sense? So Howard Hill or Martin Hill. They want to be included in that because it's not a public road. I'm sorry, Craig. So Howard Hill and Martin Hill and stuff like that, North Bell Road wouldn't be included in that because it's not a public road. Right, not accessible to the public. Good. Okay. So we, we know we have to edit. Thank you for doing that. Are there any other edits to include on this on this set of meeting minutes? So therefore, I entertain a motion to approve the May 12th minutes as amended. So I'll put a motion to approve the May 12th minutes as amended tonight. Thank you. Second. second. And seconded. Any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Craig? Yes. Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. And I two in favor, four in favor, none opposed. On to the minutes from May 19th. We had a quorum that night. Did you come in? You came in, Sarah? Uh, halfway. Halfway, yeah. yeah. Okay. So any of the ordinance stuff? I cannot say anything. Maybe okay. I should recruit myself in. Want to? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, boy, yeah. Well, uh, Richard, you're Richard is, here. Rich isn't here, so. Okay, then. I, mm. I think we should put this off, mm. these minutes off until we have Rich. Rich. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. So we'll post, we will do deal with this next time. I hope. We hope. Right. right. Because without Rich being here tonight, don't have three members. Oh, gotcha. Right. I'm following. A little slow. You caught it. It's all good. Yeah. All righty. Uh, that should, we've done two, not the third set of minutes. I think that's it for tonight. So uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And second. Second did any more discussion? Craig, you in favor of adjourning? One, Sarah? Yes. George? Absolutely. And four in favor. Good night. Thank you. Richard, thank you very much. I have yeah. stayed. <laughs> okay. All right. You, you, you stay here, please. <laughs> All right, so I think, pardon me. So Richard, I'm going to uh, stop the recording and then turn the meeting. Yes, I did.